Okay, this is linear transformation C30, and we're talking pre-images now. Uh, every linear transformation, of course, maps one vector onto a new vector, and the question is, how do we reverse the process? That is, how do we figure out what vector was mapped onto these as solutions? And that's what pre-images do. And of course, when it's matrix-based like this, it's pretty easy. We're just looking for the solution to the linear system. So that's all we're gonna do. If I wanna find u such that t u is equal to two, three, then I basically need to know what values of x1, x2, and x3 make this system produce two, three. And it could be one, it could be many, it could be none. Let's see. The first step is to build the matrix. So I'm gonna build an augmented matrix, which is two, negative one, five, two, and negative four, two, negative 10, three. Of course, to do this with technology, I'm gonna to have to build a third and fourth row because tech doesn't like to do RFs of non-square matrices, but I'm gonna take the RF of this guy. And what we end up with is this, uh, one, negative one half, five halves, and zero. So, so far so good. But then the second line is a disaster, zero, 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 one, and the third line, zero, 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 zero. And you can see we end up with a pivot row in N plus one. And as a result of that, uh, this augmented matrix has no solution, which means there are no pre-images for 2, 3. There are no values I could select for x1, x2, and x3 where this linear transformation would produce 2, 3. So when I say, what's the pre-image negative 1 of 2, 3, the only answer to that is it's the null set. Okay, let's do the same thing for uh, 4, 8. Okay, so we want to find... Uh, u such that t u is going to end up being equal to 4, negative 8. And to do that, I build the augmented matrix 2, negative 1, 5, 4, and negative 4, 2, negative 10, and negative 8. And of course, I'll add a row of zeros to that too, so the RF works out. I actually add two rows of zeros. So the RF for this guy is better news. It's 1, negative one-half, uh, five halves, two, and then the rest are all zeros. And so if we analyze this RF, we'll see that R equals one, uh, N equals three. Uh, our, our determined rows are one, and our free rows are two and three. So that means two and three are free variables, and the only one that's determined is one. So if we wrote a matrix of the solutions, then uh, row one would be that it would be uh, two, because that's the solution, uh, plus one half of u2, minus five halves of u3. So that would be the first row. And then of course the second row would just be U2 and the third, third row would be U3, whoops, U3. So if we were to build a matrix that delivers this pretty consistently, then uh, that would have to be, uh, my solution for U would have to be equal to, well, it's two zero zero because that's gotta be there all the time. And then we would add on to it plus the u2 produces one half, one, zero. And I won't put the u2 there because I'm just going to build a span out of it. Plus, and then the u3 would produce minus five halves, zero, one. And instead of a plus here, I'm just gonna put a comma, and then I'm gonna say this is a spanning set to form the other two, because u2 and three aren't significant. I just need linear combinations of this together with two, zero, zero, and that's it. This is u. Any vector that comes out of this spanning set plus two, zero, zero 
would definitely form four negative eight in this linear transformation. So it means there are millions and millions of vectors that will produce four negative eight. Unusually enough though, there were none that produced two, three. So there you go. This would be the spanning step that would represent U, which is the pre-image of four negative eight.